Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Waffle Press Morning Movie Show. We're recording in the early hours of the morning, Sunday morning. How's it going, Gene Aversa, my co-host? So cold. It's like 5 a.m. Freezing, wearing my beanie, drinking my tea. Yeah, and the sun's not even out yet. Uh, what, what, what's going on, Gene? Are we, are we alone today? Are we by ourselves? Are we recording just the two of us in the early hours of Sunday morning? <laughs> No, no, we got some guests. Got some guests on the on the line here. Now, would would you like to introduce them, or should I introduce yeah, them? Sure. We, we yeah. didn't we um, didn't say we should introduce them. Oh we're yeah, like, yeah, we'll introduce you. Yeah, we got uh, my good friends uh, Cruz Castillo, who I met at Cal State LA. I got my mug here. Oh, the mug, yeah. yeah. <laughs> graduated there, and uh, Sebastian Fernandez, who uh, you know was living with and uh, known for the past like two years, so. Yeah. Also attended Cal State LA. Yeah, you can attend Cal State LA. Yeah, that's right. I did for a minute. Yeah. We all. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna put a little applause here. For yeah, you guys. yeah. For like uh, for the for alums. Cal State LA. Mm-hmm. We get a Cal State LA fund. All right. Back. <laughs> I need to oh. finish. I need oh. to go back and finish. Actually. Well, you know, you could do it like online or something. No. Can you? Yeah. Here. That'd be dope. Yeah, like it's all online. For- Oh, holy smokes, he's right. What? Pandemic, online classes. There you go. Probably, yeah. But, uh, yeah, thank, cool. yeah, thanks for joining us today, though. Did you hear? Um, I was on your uh, set well, um, a few weekends ago. That was you? You were What's there? <laughs> you couldn't see me with the mask. <laughs> you know? Didn't know it was me. Everyone looks different after the pandemic. You know, some people have, like, shaved heads or beards you know yeah. or they became yeah. like Rudy Giuliani and they're just like deranged mm. so, no you, you you do not want to be like Rudy Giuliani <laughs> good lord four um, seasons. no oh oh wow um no this is not this is not the political podcast but we have not shied away from politics here so so yeah. we are just gonna uh say again fuck Donald Trump uh not you know, taking the victories where we can get them nowadays and feels good, at least in, in that regard. But what else feels good is to get a project off the ground, get it made, work with people you care about and be able to share in, in stuff that you're proud of. And so today we're going to talk a little bit about what Cruz and Sebastian have been up to. But we're also going to talk about what you guys have been watching lately. So, uh, guys, wh- wh- what's going on? What's new in the world for you two? Have you been uh, adapting to life? in the pandemic i haven't seen you guys in a while like in person and um yeah how how, just how's it going it's going good um i saw the new mutants and guns akimbo yesterday so i'm kind of reeling from that i started the mandalorian today and i'm on episode one season two and i think i realized why i like the show now because i was still on the fence for the mandalorian for a while Hmm. I'm glad to hear you say that because Gene and I were also, I wouldn't even say on the fence. I'd say like we tr- we had trouble getting over the fence. We're like, I don't like this. What and was then, the fence? What was the um, fence for you guys? Uh, it's like an the first season's like an outline of a show. And I'm like, that sounds like it could be good. And then you're watching yeah. it and you're like, oh, this doesn't feel like anything. Like nothing, like not even in terms of plot or character. There's just like nothing there. It's cool yeah. to like all the tech, but I just didn't care. And like the last two episodes were like bangers. And the first two episodes of season two, I really liked. So I'm like, okay, yeah. I like you now. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I would go more or less the same. I just felt like the uh, show was trying to like figure out what it was about. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah. And uh, it wasn't uh, plotted um, really, uh, like structurally, I felt like characters just disappear mm-hmm. for episodes on end. Like, mm-hmm. uh, I wanted to see more of uh, Werner Herzog, who's uh, that he's uh, Imperial because uh, he was set up to be the big bad, and then uh, John Carlo just takes over. So yeah. yeah, it was kind of meandering. I felt the first season. I don't know. What about you, Cruz? What do you think? Cruz. Oh, did he freeze? He could have froze. Oh, oh yeah, he, uh, he did. Froze. That's okay. So. So it feels really old to me is what was freaking me out. It's like, and I don't want to like, 
compare it to a Western because, you know, yeah, that has the Western qualities, of course, but it feels like Bonanza. Yeah. Basically, you'd get like a setup, a problem, and then resolution, and then we're on to the next one. Right. That was, that was, my, that was my problem, too, because everyone made it out to be like a Sergio Leone movie when I was like, it's just gun smoke or like kung, you yeah. know, kung fu. And it's not like that's bad, you know, kung fu mm-hmm. is like a good show, but like, they were really marketing it as this like Game of Thrones sort of, uh, and everyone yeah, was like, talking about it. Like, that's that's epic. Thing. yeah. Like, I'm, I, I'm cool with like the episodic thing. And uh, we, Gene and I talk about it on the show all the time. So I'll just say this really quick and I'll, I'll let you get all your stuff out there, Seabass. But like, I, I'm cool with the episodic thing. The problem is that like, you, when you do an episodic thing, it still has to be grounded in like character or emotion. And like, it's hard to do that with a character who doesn't talk a lot. <laughs> like at all so yeah, I, I think just that's, ended up not that's caring. a challenge yeah and then, then the baby doesn't talk yeah <laughs> like two characters that don't talk centered centered on them for like 30 minutes but i mean i, I think that's a wonderful thing a wonderful challenge for the filmmakers in mm-hmm. itself because you get to show like um the hesitance or just the the the, the problems that these characters face and they don't there's no emotion you just it's all based on action like he obviously cares for the child because right. he's stuck by it this whole time but yeah i do see where that is a problem or how to connect I think. yeah with everything but i mean it's cool yeah i mean it's Baby better than still killing me yeah new mutants better than new mutants so what's the problem with new mutants Oh, uh, it was just like it's not a uh, you know it's fine, but it's like it's not really a movie. <laughs> it's like Why? It's, oh, it just it feels like it's like uh, like it's missing scenes. It, it feels like it's missing entire like arcs. Things mm. people just show up like Lockheed the dragon's just there. There's no explanation. <laughs> <laughs> fucking dragon appears out of nowhere. That was dope though. That was fucking. I mean, for what they for what they were trying to do, like you know, commend them. You know, it's like. For a superhero movie, um, you know, it's the first first one that really plays with like I feel uh, some genre like horror. Um, the... did, <laughs> did anybody else get kind of like sick and tired of every other scene being this is my family drama? Uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I oh, killed yeah. somebody in my pad. I was just like, wow, everybody's got that scene. Today, huh? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh my gosh and then a uh, uh, quick quick time out let me let yeah. me just go see where Cruz is um yeah. i'll cut myself talking out um you guys could go ahead and continue no sweat well, i mean we could edit do you want to edit this out or like yeah yeah I'll, i mean I'll, I'll edit it out i'm just gonna see where, he, where he's okay. at right now yeah i was like you know just the way uh yeah just the way uh it tried to be it was, it was literally one after the other <laughs> yeah it was weird <laughs> yeah so fucking yeah. random Oh no! I mean, like for Marvel, like uh, for like a super movie or a big blockbuster one, it's like one of the first ones that are like, oh, was it these two characters? They may be gay. Mm-hmm. They like explicitly show them being gay. Yeah, that, yeah. that was kind of cool. Like that was know, great. Yeah, absolutely. Was it, like for all the Marvel films, they're like, well, you know, Valkyrie's gay, but they don't mm-hmm. really show it. You know, or okay, bunch of yeah, guys. yeah. So that was yeah, it's like yeah. like representation. You can't just say it you know yeah it's like you know i mean obviously the big one the big dumbledore. elephant in the room is jk rowling where she's like oh yeah dumbledore was gay the whole time and it's like wow that's so exciting and cool when you're like in eighth grade and then you get older and you're like yeah but like you could just say that about anyone yeah <laughs> like it doesn't you don't do anything with it. you're just doing it for like brownie points it's kind of weird right and then you know now it's like really weird because she's like full mask off transphobe and like fuck her yeah but <laughs> yeah if, uh she didn't have all this time on her hands being locked down she wouldn't have like took off the mask yeah you know like, like there's it. so many like rich assholes that we just don't know about them being assholes like dude just go hide in your cave you have like all the money in the world what the fuck are you doing like getting mad at teenagers online for like what right. an empty life yeah anyways yeah. welcome back Cruz. <laughs> doesn't she have kids too like can't they tell her like all right we're gonna take away your phone bitch <laughs> I don't think they call her bitch, but but uh, Cruz, you you with us? Here, yeah. I don't know. All right, I'm cool. Here. Your wife? Okay, okay. No, no, we're 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 good. Then um, okay. Then we'll just pivot to you, unless uh, Seabass, you had more venting about the Mandalorian. No, 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 no. We moved on. What was that? <laughs> what? What was said about the Mandalorian? I want to know. 
Oh, he's just finally enjoying it. But also that first season was this like kind of like cookie cutter bonanza feeling to it where it was just like a sitcom. Like there was a problem, some like friction, and then it just was solved at the end of the episode. Mm. So in that sense, it felt really old to me. But like, it's cool what they've done now that I'm looking at it. Like you, you have what George Lucas created, which is this giant universe. And then they've just like pulled it down into like a, like a microscopic like look at everything. It's like, oh, this is the world in Tatooine. This is the world here in Mossad or something like that. Yeah. And that's super cool, I think, because there's a different culture within each of these yeah. stopping points. Yeah. Also, I'm a man of simple tastes, and look, you, you put a big monster in front of me, I'm probably going to like what you show me for a little bit. That's yeah, what got me through the 2019 Hellboy. Um, but Cruz, what's been getting you through quarantine? What have you been watching? What's up? Um, the Boys. Uh, Lovecraft. I think Lovecraft, Lovecraft Country? My favorite, yeah. Um, besides its shoddy representation of natives... Um, I think it's been phenomenal. It's like been one of my favorite shows for sure. Uh, I grew up with like my uncle pushing uh, Edgar Allan Poe and, and H.P. Uh, Lovecraft on me. Yeah. And then as I got older and I was taking like literary classes, they were like, yo, Lovecraft's racist, bro. Yeah, he's like super racist too. Like He's so racist. He basically invented his own religion of racism. <laughs> That's like insane, right? Yeah. But that's funny that you said that, Cruz, because then those first two episodes must have hit you like a truck because those are, those are the only two I've seen. But when you mentioned the uncle thing, that sounds like very like, yeah, it sounds like the show. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So then I took literary classes and uh, all my teachers were like, yo, Lovecraft's the shit, but he's also a piece of shit because he's racist. So all this cosmic horror that I grew up loving, I was it was tainted. So um, I haven't read Lovecraft Country book. Gene, I know you did. Yeah, I was. Yeah, I read the book during. Um, I think when I was watching along with the show, mm-hmm. it's uh, it's a little bit different. It goes into some different places. Yeah. But I, I I love the show. Um, it just reminds me of like watching the old sci-fi stuff I used to grow up watching on TV, but it's just with people of color now, and it's. Um, I love it. It's got like you know. I don't want to do spoilers, but I love that it's got different aspects of sci-fi. Oh yeah, it just covers like all these different mm-hmm. subgenres in it. For sure. And yeah. I think- do you ever? Um, I was going to ask because it's like you know I feel like it's uh, sometimes like people avoid that aspect of Lovecraft. But do you ever have like a conversation like with other fans, just like yeah, like he's like he's a ra- like he's a super racist, like he's puts other racists to shame, just in like. Mm-hmm. his beliefs and stuff mm-hmm. yeah and he was a he was a weird looking dude too like it was uh, <laughs> yeah the images of him but he was a <laughs> he was an odd looking guy yeah. so it's like you really thought you were um superior, superior. Huh? yeah you thought you guys were the superior all right <laughs> and looking like that not not to shame people for how they how they're born looking for but sure. he did the same thing, so fuck him. Yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If you're a piece of, sh- if you're a racist, like, sorry, open season, motherfucker. But um, speaking of of Lovecraft uh, and what we've been watching, we're gonna Gene and I will skim over our stuff so we can go directly to what um you guys are here to talk about. But I've, I I talked Gene about this, and I know he's a fan of it too. Watch the Color Out of Space. Mm-hmm. It's an ad- adaptation of of the Lovecraft story, which you know the Lovecraft story also tinged with the racism. And the film adaptation, I think, smartly addresses it without the characters, like, directly speaking about it. You know, it's all about, like, the body language and, like, the casting in the characters. I don't want to spoil it for people that are not familiar with that Lovecraft story, but I think it it explicitly addresses the stuff we're talking about, like, with Lovecraft Country while updating the story. Uh, and also being made for like five million dollars and when you watch it you're like wow they did that for that <laughs> like that's crazy um it's one of the best movies of the year i think and i uh i, I could not be happier that my boy nicholas cage is <laughs> he's just doing like these Coming bangers back. like one a year like one genuinely great movie and then 
everything else he's just interested in. So yeah, that, that's what I've been watching, along with a bunch of David Lynch for for November because yeah. you know, all that noir shit. I've never been a really a big fan of Nicolas Cage, but um, I was never really a fan of John Malkovich either. And a few months ago, I watched Being John Malkovich, and I actually thought it was really good. I really liked it. And I was like, all right, John Malkovich, I uh, misjudged you. Yeah. And then I watched Red. <laughs> oh, I like that movie. I yeah. like it. Like yeah, Red is really good. Yeah. That's a so- you know, it's a solid movie. Sometimes that's all you need, you know? Yeah. Right? Yeah, and then he could have been the vulture in Spider-Man 4. <sighs> oh, really? Yeah. yeah. You know, the concept art that came out, he was the vulture. I'm just waiting for the return of Tobey Maguire, so... Yeah. No, that's a whole other conversation we do not have time to get into. <laughs> um, Gene, what else are you watching? Yeah, right now I'm just watching The Haunting of Bly Manor on Netflix. That's been really interesting. It's a lot different than The Haunting of Hill House. Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, they're the same sort of haunted mansion sort of thing. They're both very gothic. Like It's more like a gothic romance than like a gothic horror. So it's kind of like... A, What's that Del Toro movie? I always forget his name. Um, Crimson Peak. Crimson Peak, yeah. Yeah, kind of like that movie Peak. fucking rules. Yeah, that one bangs. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I was uh, really enjoying that. That's kind of what I've been hooked on lately. And then, yeah, just watching uh, just whatever movies I could uh, get my hands on. So. Uh, really quick, that Blind Manor, that's the turning of the, the screw, right? That story? Am, uh, I, am that I fucking is- that up? No, that I'm not sure of. I would need to look, but okay. By uh, uh, produced by our, uh, by the boy. What's his name? Mike Flanagan. Mike Flanagan, yeah, and starring my boy for my zombie or co-starring, I guess, supporting role, whatever, uh, for my zombie, Raúl Coley. Oh yeah, he's uh, he's like one of the uh, leads in it. Yeah, Dr. Ravi Chakrabarty. Everyone watch I Zombie. It's great for like four and a half seasons. <laughs> Just the ending kind of sucks, but whatever, it doesn't matter. Um. But what we're really here to talk about today is the baby of you guys, not literal human baby. That would be physically impossible for now until science figures something out. But um, L.A., serious. Why don't you guys go ahead and tell us about it? Hey, uh, real quick aside. When I was a kid, I watched a movie with Arnold Schwarzenegger and he had a baby. (laughs) What's that movie called? Junior. Oh, yes. Junior. Junior. Yes. That was fucking yeah. weird. That was like, that was really weird. Like that's such. And with Danny, is it with Danny DeVito too? No, no, no. That's so, twins. Yeah. Oh, that's twins. Okay. No, it wasn't Danny DeVito in Junior as well. What? Yeah. Hold I on. Like he was. Stop. Kind of feel like. He, yeah, I kind of feel like yeah. he was. I just remember being a kid, yeah. mm-hmm. and like sitting on the bed and watching that because my mom was at some friend's house and they were like, "Here, watch this movie. Try to distract me." I just remember Arnold Schwarzenegger going to the bushes <laughs> and having a baby. And it was like, so like, oh, shoot. Yeah. So oh, like, my God. Because you, got, you, like, cause you were young, did you ask your mom, like, some <laughs> guys could have babies? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I was like, oh, oh, shit. Like, I guess men can have babies, too. Or at least Arnold Schwarzenegger. Sure. He's Arnold. the fucking Terminator. Why not? Arnold Schwarzenegger, Danny DeVito, Told you. and Emma Thompson. What? Yeah. Yeah. That's Emma- a lot of interest. <laughs> It is now Watch streaming it. on Hulu for Hulu <gasps> subscribers. I guess that's our recommendation for the week. Oh, Junior. Yeah. I even write Veterans me. Day. Happy Veterans Day, I guess. <laughs> to all the parents who have birthed babies. <laughs> um, but speaking of birthing babies, what what's up with LA? Elders. It's our baby. Uh, we had a baby. Um, we did. This is a project we've been working on, God, for three years, this October. Yep. Um, Sebastian and I were doing a podcast, like a radio, uh, oh, fuck, what th- what's his name? Radio play. But what, Os- or Orson Welles. Orson Welles. We were doing like Orson Welles status, old CBS radio plays uh, for mm-hmm. NHC. And um, I think we came out of finishing one up and... We were like, you guys hungry? You hungry? You want to go eat? You want to go eat? And then I just like, I was like, hey, the other day I was sitting on the toilet and I just had this idea. And Sebastian was like, I legit, that's, I was sitting in the toilet. Or what's the thing? And the thing hit me in the head and I had the idea for the flex capacity. Light bulb? <laughs> light bulb. Is that what it is? In the thing? Yeah, yeah the light bulb. Ding. Yeah, ding. No, uh, Back to the Future, what hits him in the head? And 
Oh, uh, Am I mixing I, I, I don't know. No. That. He slips I think, I think on the you're mixing metaphors. He slips, he slips on the toilet. Oh, okay, okay. And he hits his head. Yeah. The idea for the head. monster. Yeah. All the best ideas are on the toilet, though. For sure. Yeah. Or the shower. Yeah. yeah. And uh, we came to Elvis. And originally, we thought it was going to be like a, a web series. Yeah. Like this little like YouTube series that we were just going to do with our friends, you know, using someone's phone, someone's camera. We just wanted to make make stuff in the vein of like um, Issa Rae, right? Yeah. Like, with Black Woman and Broad City. They were originally yeah. on the as well. And we just wanted to make stuff that was like that. And I think it just... It got momentum and we got more people that came on and supported us and wanted to help make this and now we've made a pilot yeah short film pilot i mean it's like a short film but it's, a, it's intended to be a pilot yeah which is great so it's um it's been a fucking journey yeah for sure three years could you give a quick summary? Like, what is LA about? It's expensive to be poor. <laughs> Perfect. That's well, that's all you plot? need. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I, I think I think that actually sums it up very well because that's a topic of conversation that we've definitely all had <laughs> with each other and yeah. um, certain For issues sure. that it, it takes to kind of to get by around uh, Los Angeles, especially. Sebastian and I are just two Latino actors that were wanting to make content. Cause you know, like um, my, my white friends were basically getting like, you know, tons of auditions a month. Like in a week they'd get like six or seven auditions. And I was like, I'm getting five in a month. Mm -hmm. If I'm lucky sometimes like so, you know, it's just the era of the internet. So we were, Sebastian was feeling the same way and we were just like, let's make our own content and let's make characters based off of our own experiences. Something that we can put like our time and passion into, but also something that's not a stretch, like not trying to take on something like Lovecraft Country, right? Trying to tell like a sci-fi story. There's no way we could have done it on a broke boy budget. So, we tried to make something that was more relevant to the lives that we live. Uh, and we just wanted to tell a story about Los Angeles because we're both LA natives. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to, every time you see movies that talk about Los Angeles, it's usually the West side or the, like the Northwest side. Yeah. Um, you rarely ever see like the East side, Southeast side, San Gabriel Valley, or even LA County, Norwalk, Southgate, Whittier, like, you never really hear about that. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to tell those sides because that's where we're both from the East side. So I, you guys are too, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. I, I was, yep. Yeah, I was born in LA County, yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah my address is, no, um, not doing that again. <laughs> but uh, uh, what, what roles do you both fulfill on the show? Because you're both actors. Are you both acting on the show? I know Gene knows this, but I don't. So that's okay that I ask. Uh, yeah, I mean, both of us are considered co-creators, writers, um, and then of course actors. Uh, Cruz is the one, the lead. We follow his journey essentially throughout the show. And then I play his best friend slash housemate. So I'm, I'm there considerably a large amount of the time. Uh, yeah, that pretty much answers your question. But as like pilots go, we start off following like one character but inevitably we had three others that the show would branch out to. Exactly. Um, so it's like uh, my character, Aiden Alvarez, is the character you have the introduction into the world of LA. And then you meet these other people and inevitably it'll like diverge off into their stories. Yeah. Yeah. All right, yeah, that's, that's cool. Cause uh, currently also writing in quarantine, right? Like it's, it's hard because you always got to consider like, what's my starting point? Like uh, how light in a story do you want to go into? What advice would you guys give to people trying to create something to artists that want to try to create something from the ground up? Don't stop. Uh, it's funny when you, when I was just listening to what Cruz was saying right now and 
even uh, kind of pertaining to your question, your last question about us being actors, we, we didn't just make this um, as a point to, to do something. We've always been making something as a point to act. I know he and I both come from backgrounds, not just as being artists, but as being creators. And he's done short films, I've done short films, I've written short films, he's written short films. You know, we've always been just like, you know, full-fledged artists basically all around, been able to do everything and anything just so that something can get done. Uh, so yeah, I think, you know, and we talked we talked stories about our previous journeys with short stories or with writings and um, it's basically don't stop, just keep doing it. You know, if you, you fail, you learn your lesson and you just continue again because that's kind of what all of our journeys have been. I, I mean, I know Gene, especially too, he's, he's a filmmaker himself and so are you, Diego. You guys have put a, you know, a considerable amount of films under your belt and but you, you, keep, you keep going, you don't stop. For sure. Yeah, I mean, and yeah. I, think it's, I think it's also surround yourself uh, with like-minded people yeah. that are also better at things than you are because that's going to push you to push yourself. Like, you know, I mean, I'm friends with you guys and you guys are all creative. Everybody here right now is creative. So us being in this group, the whole point is like, we push ourselves and, you know, try to elevate ourselves and push each other with each other. Yeah. So I think that's been like, Gene saved the whole LA. <laughs> he came in like, we didn't know how to. DIT. Yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, do mm -hmm. you want me to say that story? Yeah, sure. go for it, please. Uh, so it was, uh, I think it was the night before your first day, I got a call from Keenan because I was, uh, I think I was uh, hanging out with uh, like a friend and then it was kind of, it was like maybe like 1030. And then Keenan was like, oh, hey, how's it going? And he was like, uh, he's like, are you free tomorrow? I'm like, yeah, I think so. And then he was uh, like, can you uh, come in at like, God, it was like 7 a.m. Mm -hmm. um, to like DIT? And I'm like, yeah, sure, man. Like, I'll do you that uh, solid because, uh, you know, we're all good friends. Do uh, do favors, but, you know. Yeah. I think I went, you know, went to bed like around like 12 and then just woke up at six the next day and there I was, nice. and, uh, you know, yeah, it was just, uh, it was cool to uh, see everyone again because, yeah, it was just uh, with COVID and we could get into that later, just shooting with COVID too, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I'm sure that was a huge op obstacle, you know, um, we're all in film relatively and, you know, it's been yeah. difficult, just, uh, it's been kind of like a break, I guess, from film and then going back into it. Mm -hmm. kind of has its own hurdles so gene, gene yeah. saved the project essentially yeah but yes we needed that, that, that stuff sorry. clear so, we so i came it. in there like i think you gave me like uh some breakfast burritos and that was like my reward that was reward enough you know, <laughs> had a bribe me. i love breakfast burritos so uh, well here i gene didn't just save that i had technical issues on mandalorian which obviously la has got a bunch more millions of pieces and gears that need to go to, to make that function but so gene saved two projects that weekend because i wasn't able to take care of the recording and the uploading on that up that the premiere pilot like of the season for the mandalorian mm -hmm. and then like gene what time did you go to bed that day like three uh, uh, yeah i probably went to bed around like and what what time do you guys what, what time was roll call and then uh for uh you for was there. There. For set for that weekend, the last week, and I think it was like seven thirty or something. Yeah. All right. Well, another round of applause for Gene. Because oh. good lord, man, what a beast! Thank you, Gene. I need no sleep. Oh, no. <laughs> no, please, please sleep because COVID cases are going up, and the less yeah. sleep you have, the more susceptible you are. So please, yeah. please sleep. Don't do that anymore. But thank you. Busy Chris. Um, yeah. <laughs> but uh, for for the COVID, uh, what was it like filming with with all that stuff? Because you know, you gotta you gotta be careful with all that, and it's uh, it's only getting less safe right now because we're run by idiots. For Transitioning sure. idiots. Sure. <laughs> Transitioning <laughs> idiots, uh, for sure. But like, the lesser. Like, what, what was what was the process of of filming on a set like that? God, paperwork, yeah. right? Yeah, paperwork. Paperwork, research paperwork, finding people yeah. to be COVID officers, yeah. paying for those people to get their COVID training. Yeah. 
and then paying for all the wipes, the disinfectants, the sanitizers. Um, yeah. And then you're on set, you try to keep your hardest, you know, doing the distance. Mm -hmm. uh, everyone's got to wear masks. Um, so, we what? At all times. Yeah. Yeah. Someone passes out food, like you can't just go grab your own food. Someone's got to pass you food, the COVID officer. Yeah, like if you have pizza, you can't just grab pizza. Someone needs to hand you each slice. Yeah, so that's why we didn't even have pizza at all once. I think I've ever been on an independent set and there was not pizza at some time. Um, yeah, <laughs> it was intense, but Sebastian was a beast. Um, he was like a, a main producer running around, telling people what to do, bossing, making things run and flow, making sure everything was following the rules and regulations. Um, yeah, he's scary. He's scary when he gets... Uh, yeah, dude. <laughs> you have to back down on this guy. Mm -hmm. And shout out to Jill. Yeah. Jill was one of our COVID officers. She was... Um, uh, Myra. And and Tara. Yeah, Joanna. Like, again, yeah. it's an amazing team. We surrounded ourselves with people that are really good. Yeah. Like, really, really good. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, there was that kind of like fear of like, fuck, like we're shooting during a pandemic, but, mm -hmm. and um, especially in certain locations, there were just like non-union non people who, who were just not part of the production and they were coming in pretty close to us. And we were just trying to be safe, trying to be, secure and locked down as we could and you know it was um it was a big relief when we finished and nobody has COVID basically it's like yeah. a huge fucking badge of honor right there for us I think yeah and then just yeah. you know supervising everyone to get tested and getting yeah tested. yeah it's just oh yeah that was the other thing everyone had Nothing. to get tested every, like, every week yeah get tested or you're not on set because essentially you're creating like a like a mini bubble like for the weekend Mm -hmm. like the nba or something yeah and it's like a bubble yeah yeah, yeah. no okay. slip-ups no one almost positive but then she actually tested negative so uh, false positive yeah, which was kind of scary yeah, but, yeah. and i just yeah. think it's a yeah we're lucky um i think we're just we're genuinely lucky that we had really good people on the team because honestly it's uh it's created a whole new job in the industry, like being COVID officers and people that follow the regulations, it's cost a lot more money. So for us to figure out a way to do it, with a little to go. Yeah. That was, uh, you know, that was the team. That was Rosa, Joanna, you know, Sebastian, Antonio, Myra, Jill, like everybody just working hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we all stuck together. Yeah. Yeah, I think, yeah, it's just creating, like, this, like, just patience, almost. Mm -hmm. It's a layer of, like, patience in, like, the film industry right now that everyone needs to, to have. Just kind of, like, stick it through, stick it out, and uh, just be, like, kind to each other, too. Yeah. Pretty much, yeah. I was, I was going to say, so, like, uh, just going off of that, like, can you talk us through the decision to just uh, to film during uh during COVID because like you could have said like okay let's like let's wait I mean granted we don't know like when this will be all over but like what drove to just like kind of uh you know just um to like you know film and like uh the drive to like you know get this I don't think we wanted to wait honestly yeah you know it was yeah it was a lot of things it was just a lot of people um the pandemic you know, we've gone through a lot, right? Mm -hmm. um, this has been a very shitty administration, like straight up fascism. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think fascism instills fear and fear instills fight or flight. And we were just like, well, we got to do this. You know what I mean? We don't know if tomorrow's guaranteed. We don't know if the pandemic's going to get worse if, if uh, fascism's going to take over again for another four years. And if it does take over for another four years, it may go beyond those four years. And the at the same time you had like black lives matter <laughs> it's my black sabbath black lives matter shirt um nice you you know you had all these people of color stepping up and you know we had a story that was about 
people of color and you know these stories are now more relevant than ever so i think we were just like we got to move like you know we got yeah. we've got the money we've got the time due to covid and a lot of people losing their jobs uh got more time to help out and be around and make sure this could actually happen so we just yeah. jumped in it oh for sure yeah and you know sure. you know that said i felt pretty safe like you know we mm -hmm. had a pretty like safe environment so yeah i mean you know it's like being on that side like i felt uh i felt very like taken care of too just want to add that you know that's that's jill that's myra joanna that was all them legit but also i don't think we just wanted to put it off because just you know, so many other people are still pushing to make their shows come alive and yeah, yeah. we we'd already been working on it for three years so we were just like you know now is the time yeah, because uh, yeah, I mean, filming's filming's restarted, you know, with all the safety protocols we just mentioned, mm -hmm. and like, uh, you know, some like we've like it's like evolution. We're all adapting in film right now. Yeah. People are like, you know, how are you filming in the pandemic? It's like we're just uh, we're just surviving, just adapting. You know, mm -hmm. such a strong industry, I guess. But yeah, you know, I mean, look at this is us. Like the storyline, like is the pandemic. They're living through the pandemic. You know. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean, like you know, all these television shows or movies, they'll find a way to adapt. So yeah, I'm glad we all glad we uh, yeah we made it through these last couple months. And I guess uh, the the last big question I have then: finish the pilot. Let's say it goes to series. Do you guys have a, a seasonal plan? Do you guys have arcs? You guys, how how long would you like this to go? Like in a perfect world, in five years in the future, we're all still around. COVID has evolved into full-on zombie apocalypse, but LA, how long do you want it to go for? Or would you like it to go for, I guess, is, is the, the question. I mean, yeah, I'm just trying to tr figure out, like, are zombies going to be watching the show? Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it'll, they'll be like eye zombie zombies, not to spoil it, but in <laughs> iZombie, the zombies can eat brains and act like normal people. If they don't have brains, they go what they call full Romero, you know? And there's no, there's no coming back from that. So nope. zombies have acclimated and also evolved into society, much like we have with the filmmaking industry. And they will be watching LA, of course. Okay. Yeah, I think, I mean, right now it's just like, let's take it as long as we can go for it. I don't know what Cruz's thoughts are. Um, six seasons in a movie. Uh, <laughs> there we go. No, I, um. Yeah, uh, in terms of like pitching things, you definitely got to be aware of the future of where you want your set project to go. So yeah, we've definitely, God, during the pandem pandemic, how many damn meetings did we have? Like, we had like some two to three meetings a week for like yeah. what, two hours every night and just like going through the characters, the character arcs, the overall story arcs episode arcs seasonal arcs i mean we've got everything mapped out to season four yeah like we're we're ready um and that was the the main creators it's been sebastian keenan rosa and like so pretty much yeah. Nice. yeah nice i was gonna ask um you know while we're here any uh production stories we could share because that was a uh, on shoot sure yeah. Why not? there are some front production stories though i just remember um well there's two that comes to mind uh we got a, uh, we were uh we uh you had a whole uh you had a whole bus to rent you want to talk That's about true. that you were in that a was metro bus that was pretty dope i wasn't on the bus mostly though so you're gonna have to i, I rode it like once or twice Mm -hmm. But I think Cruz and I think maybe Gene, have, were you guys on the bus more than yeah. I was? Yeah, I went in there to like check on everyone, give them like waters. What do you guys, how'd you guys yeah. feel? I think there was, because originally we wanted to get the Metro, uh, yeah. but the Metro's hella expensive. Uh, <laughs> that would have been like almost half the budget. But we wanted to show, again, like sides of LA that people don't normally know. And, Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't know that Los Angeles has a, a metro. 
yeah. the rail line. So uh, we couldn't afford it. So we settled for bus. And um, Joanna knew some homie that does buses for film. And I think when we went, Sebastian, that first morning, I met you, Keenan, and Joanna. And I walked down and you were standing there all waving. And there were just buses around you. I was like, oh, holy shit, we're in this, man. Like, we are in this like i've yeah. never been... like we were going to uh check out buses to see if we could get one of these but it was just so cool so and then that first bus fell through yeah and then we went looking for a second bus and that was just sebastian yeah. and, I. and they yeah. showed us bus after, bus after bus and we were like just about to leave right mm -hmm. and we, just, we went to the back and saw this metro local orange one just like hidden in the back and I'm glad we didn't leave because that ended up being the bus. It was perfect. Yeah, yeah. that was uh, that was so uh, that was such good. Uh, I guess like what we could call it, like vehicle design or uh, set set direction. People kept going mm -hmm. up to it. Yeah, uh, when we were yeah. filming to uh, like to, to get on, like, yeah, to get on a fare and like take it somewhere, and kept having to tell them like, no, this is this is for a scene. Like this is not a real yeah. bus. Yeah, it's operational. Yeah. Really and that cool. bus was the same bus that Keanu drove in Speed in 1995. You never know. He did. Know. The guy that we rented the bus from, he actually rented buses to Tarantino for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Right. So, oh, wow, yeah. You yes, never know. There. Yeah, he's the bus driver, too, in that scene, too, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, he, was, he was a chill guy, like, talking to him. He was. Yeah. yeah. He was really cool. Yeah, he was really, the whole bus, everything that, the whole so, bus situation was really cool. They were awesome. Yeah. So we were lucky with that for sure. Mm -hmm. What is the other one that you wanted to bring up, Gene? Oh, I just remember uh, when we were filming that day in the park where uh, something struck me as like two separate worlds. So there was us with our uh, health station and our like our COVID zones because it's like uh, A, B, A and B and uh, people are six feet apart or you know, trying to, everyone's wearing a mask and a little, like, and we're in this park and maybe like, uh, halfway across the park, there's a, I see it, this giant tent and like, there's a gaming, there's a truck where you could, uh, get video, play video games and it's oh. a kid's birthday party. <laughs> and it was like full on, they had like, you know, cause on set, like, you know, again, like, you know, someone has to hand them food. You can't have mm -hmm. like share stuff. There's like plates and stuff. Everyone's like sharing food and like, seen like you know they had maybe like 10 or 12 people there and i'm like this is, this is like completely different worlds you know <laughs> just seeing this and i don't know i felt like that was like uh like parasite or something <laughs> you know just like seeing like oh man you know yeah i think the best part of that day was when we were done filming it was jill sebastian gene and myself and we went to go buy ice creams yeah the ice cream man <laughs> yeah, well, right yeah we were like, we need to get the Spider-Man with the gummy, with the shitty gummy eyes. And that felt like very LA. That felt very yeah. Los Angeles. Like Actually, we yeah. Oh yeah, that was the best. Like, uh, felt like I Actually cool. broke, I broke my uh, built-in retainer on that ice cream. Oh fuck. I had this uh, built-in retainer. I was meaning to take it out, but like oh, 10 okay. years, it's on the bottom of my teeth. And like I've been into it, and like I, I hear like a crunch, and I'm like, oh man, my jaw feels weird. <laughs> so I got like a like it was like bent, I guess. So I had the, my dentist to take it out. So it was a that was a hard ice cream. It was like an ice cream sandwich. That's the craziest LA story I've heard from. Put <laughs> <laughs> it somewhere, yeah. That's cool. But uh, on on that note, any other final no thoughts you want to leave the the people with? Where can the people find you? Um, and anything else about LA? Um, I don't know. <laughs> you can find us at LA series. We're on Instagram. You can find us. Yeah. Yeah, we posted about Ripley's Believe It or Not, Dinosaur Mask, and Mercy Mask. Who was there? Yeah. Like, oh, it was me. <laughs> We were walking. We went to go feed Shaq. That's awesome. We were, we were walking down Hollywood Boulevard, 
That was dope. Come on, if the fucking dinosaur on Ripley's, believe it or not, building can wear a mask, you can wear a mask. That's what I think. Yeah. Put it on, man. He's got little arms. <laughs> Somebody put it on him and it's huge. Yeah. yeah. That's that's the message. Wear it's a mask. Help, help your, your neighbors, even if yeah. they're a dinosaur. Yeah. Um uh, if they're a dinosaur. Especially if they're they're extinct. So you know, <laughs> help them out. <laughs> I'm sure. Well, that's why he's more important. He's the last one, so they gotta yeah. preserve his life. Mm-hmm. For sure, for sure. No COVID. These are just yeah. normal conversations we have on the Waffle Press podcast. So, uh, where can the people also find you? So, Alay at Instagram and Twitter, right? Alay series, E double L A Y series. Yes. Yes. Good. 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 And you guys, where else? Yeah. What, what uh, social media can you plug? Oh, I'm my social media IG is Sublime88. You can find me there. That's also for my Twitter, I think. Yeah. Which I'm not on very often. And yeah. I kind of just like don't go on Facebook anymore. Fuck Facebook. Yeah, it's manipulating your data. You have yeah, yeah. Fuck, fuck Facebook. There you go. We're saying fuck Trump all the time. Fuck Facebook too. Fuck you, Mark Zuckerberg. Yeah. You alien face fuck. Sorry. But I was going to say, very angry. Sebastian actually has some funny tweets if you read it. <laughs> I, need to get back. I need to get better at that. What about you, Chris? Uh, yeah, I got to get better at Twitter. Um, yeah, all Who's the kids are on Twitter. Um, my Instagram and Twitter are the same. I think it's Cruz W. Castillo. Yeah, links down to all that down below. So if it's wrong, I'll put I'll put the right one down. Don't worry, I got you. I got Fuck you. Yeah. Uh, you. I, I I think this will be on. I think YouTube is working now. YouTube was like down this afternoon. I mean, yeah, I mean, sure. the other day when we are not recording because this is Sunday morning. Obviously, mm-hmm. <laughs> I'll save that one. Uh, Gene, where can the people find you on this uh, Sunday morning? Yeah, of course you can find me on Twitter and Instagram, Gene nine eight nine two. And you can follow me at the Diego Crespo. Check out the rest of the Waffle Press at Twitter, SoundCloud, YouTube, Spotify, iTunes, and Patreon, where you can get, I think you'll be able to get full access to the rest of the Avatar, the last Airbender retrospective, and the, the film adaptation retrospective. Legend of Korra retrospective coming at you uh, late winter, early spring 2021. And um, look out for more conversations like this at the Waffle Press. So make sure you like and subscribe. If you didn't like this episode, like and subscribe anyways, because you might find something you do like. So thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. We have been professionally unprofessional. Legend of course, better than Avatar. It's it's honestly tough. I, I rewatched The Last Airbender and I was like, I don't think Legend of Korra is going to be as good as I remember it. And then 